Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to set up this digital volt and amp meter that I purchased off eBay. So let's go. Now these meters are actually quite cheap on eBay. I purchased one, it's about yeah, $4 Australian and also free shipping. It comes with the leads required to connect the unit up and it's also designed so you can pop it into a panel if you need to if you want to flush mount it into something however you want to set it up so first i want to talk about the description or the actual workings of this meter in particular now the one that i purchased has an operating voltage of up to 30 volts and a minimum of 4 volts so that's the voltage that's actually running that meter itself now the voltage and current that can actually go through of what you're actually trying to measure so the load that you're measuring is from 0 to 100 volts and from 0 to 10 amps now this coincides with the built-in shunt that is built into the actual unit now there is a way of actually doing more than that uh, by having an external shunt but i can tell you about that in another video if you like now I'm not going to go through any of the other details that the meter can actually do. You can see there and have a look at them yourself. Now I'm going to jump into the wiring. Now I'm going to show you two ways of wiring this. As I said before, there's other ways if you're going to add in another shunt if there's more load on the DC side on your amps. But you've got the first wiring diagram which if your load is actually higher then what is acceptable for the meter to run as you can see from 4 to 30 volts so if you require a voltage of the load that is between 0 and 100 volts you would have that separate power supply for the load and then a separate power supply to run the meter and you would wire it exactly how wiring diagram 1 now now with wiring diagram 2 what you can see there is that the load of what you're connecting up and the meter itself can run off the same power supply and that's the voltage levels between 4 volts and 30 volts. Now you can see how it's wired a little bit differently here but not that dissimilar to the first wiring diagram. Now the black wire that's connected to the meter I actually connected it up to the neutral anyway it didn't have any effect now the load that I'm going to be using is 12 volt so therefore the meter and the load can both use that same power supply and that's how I'm going to set mine up so the power supply that I'm using here is just an LED driver power supply that you can also get from eBay um, it's for a 240 volt AC which then converts down to the 12 volt DC and a maximum of 12 and a half amps So enough for what I'm actually using for this meter if there was any more than that on this meter it would probably burn the meter out So how I've wired the wiring up is the same as the wiring diagrams I was showing earlier and as you can see there those leads run up into these connectors that are connected to the transformer the only two wires that are left are the ones that are going to be connected to the load but I'm just going to whack a connector on the end of those now and I'll actually turn the unit on without having any load just so you can see it. And as you can see there I'm getting 11.8 which is close enough to 12 could just be because the transformer is starting to die and it's not giving as much voltage. One of the last things I want to show you on this meter is on the back here you can see there's the built-in shunt um, which I can show you another time how we can do an external shunt if you need to for more current on the load. Alright so I'm hooking up this small air pump which you can see the positive comes straight from the positive rail into the pump and then the negative side of that goes back through the meter and into there so what I'm going to do is turn it on now and as you can see we've got that 11.7 volts and we've got 0.13 amps so it's actually measuring that fine it's a small air pump on this one and if I'm quiet you can actually hear it now the next one up is this bigger air pump which I'm going to connect up same way positive to the positive rail the negative down through into the meter now this air pump I'll be using for my co2 project so you can go check that out as well and when we plug this pump in it makes quite a bit of noise uh, it's quite powerful which will be good for that project but 
what it's telling us we got 11.6 now it's probably dropped down that little bit because of the current that's being drawn and you can see there there's about 2.7 amps roughly of constant draw but if I go back and slow that footage down you can actually see when it switches on there's a starting current that is a bit higher than that 2.6 it gets to about 3.81 which is standard for when pumps and motors turn on they usually have a higher starting current and then it drops back to that continuous current of uh, when it's actually operating it was pretty cool that i was actually able to pick that up the refresh rate on the meter usually wouldn't pick that up too often but it did in this case um, which is pretty cool so that's about it on setting up this meter now if you like projects like this let me know in the comments below Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button to see some more videos like this. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.